Teams don't work. Who told you they work? Well, I'm taking it to the extreme. Team building is one of the key skills every manager must have. Because now and again, we need to work in teams, but not all the time. So managers need to find out, when do I have a team on a job? When do I simply need a group? The best example of a team is that of a football team. You have different people, different skills, but all of them playing towards one common goal, to win the match. To win the match, they must score, or they must prevent the opposing team from scoring. So teams should have a common objective. A team should have complementary skills. These are people with different skills, different backgrounds, who are coming together, but all of them aim at achieving one task, one goal. Besides that, teams should be mutually accountable. Mutual accountability means that when we score a goal in the case of football team, we're all happy with that. We simply don't say so and so scored. The collective responsibility is that when we win the match, we have all won. It's not one individual one. So teams are essentially groups of people with a common objective, complementary skills, and mutual accountability. And for the team to succeed, it's very important that the size of the team should be relatively small. Teams of three, five, 10, 15 are okay. Once the team exceeds that, then they may start breaking down into smaller teams, smaller groups, and then they lose a common objective. You see conflict in such groups. So it's very important that we limit the size of teams. And once the team has been set up, there must be rules of the team. And this is what we call the behavior in the team. The members of the team must understand that for them to succeed, they all need to abide by certain behaviors. For instance, in a football team, there may be somebody who is so skilled at dribbling, but dribbling may not lead to scoring. Dribbling may lead to delays and may lead to the opponent taking away the ball from you. So we must have a behavior, we must agree that once you get the ball, find a way of passing it on quickly to somebody who is in a position to pass it on to another person and most likely to score. So the behavior in teams is very important for the team to succeed. And if you build a team, it's important to bring these team members together. Let them stay together for some time so they understand one another. It ma makes it easier to resolve, to, to, to manage conflict in teams when people know their behaviors, when they expect, when they know what to expect from each other. So yes, teams are wonderful institutions, but you need them. We talk about an ego saying it flies out there in the sky. And uh, legendary management guru Peter Drucker said, when you see something happen, somebody has taken a decision. Usually it's very difficult for teams to take a decision. And even if they do, you'll find that there's a dominant idea within the group which is an individual so yes teams are wonderful things that we must have in organizations but you don't need teams all the time there are times when you need individuals to do things and indeed this world has changed not because of teams or groups of people large numbers of people but because it's a few people have had the audacity to create the change that we see in the world